Welcome everyone to our inside. Ah, oh, shit. I do this every time. Welcome everyone to Around the Edge. I'm Tom Aulis, one of the owners here at Edge Home Finance. And today we get to do our fun podcast that we do where we try to always just highlight a team member, learn about uh, them, learn about their experience with Edge. And today is our first episode in our new corporate office. So Jake's still working, Jake LaTorell. He's our uh, main man with video editing and advertising. He actually plays a lot of different roles, but uh, he's going to be redesigning this room here a little bit, and we'll continue to give you guys, hopefully, some more information and learn about our team members. But with no veil, we have Mr. Jacob Kornberg. Uh, yeah. With uh, <laughs> Jake's, Jake's been with Edge since day one. So um, Jake and I actually met each other... Uh, I met Jake at my very first mortgage job. So when I walked in uh, to my very first first job, I got to sit next to him. But I'm gonna I'm gonna let Jake tell him about that. Jake, appreciate you being here, brother. Yeah, yeah, good to be here. So you started mm. with us 2011, right? What what was that? You give us kind of the run through, not only the, I guess from your recollection of, um, you know, when you started. Where were we? What were we doing? Well, it was a different. Definitely a different business back then. Um, if, I if I recall, it was Novastar when we met. Ooh, we're going way back. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> way, way back. So different day, different business, everything. But we, uh, at that time, had kind of decided to branch off. It's kind of when the state and, and the NMLS and everything were forming as well. So we had kind of decided to branch off with Chris and Chantel and get our own thing going. If I... If I remember, it was North American Financial. Yeah, yeah. Or, Let's back it up. Let's back it up. <laughs> Nova Star. Yeah. I mean, that was... Uh, do you remember what year that was? I want to say it was 08. Maybe, no. Maybe earlier? 05? Nova Star was like 03, okay. 02. Yeah. Because it was so, right when I got in. I got into the industry in 2002, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're right. You're and right. that was, was the very first place that I worked. Jay, I forget the guy's name. Beckstrand. Jay. Yeah, Jay Beckstrand. Yep. yep. He was, yep. Uh, he was. I, I don't know, I guess you owned a, re I didn't understand how it worked back then, but I guess he was the manager of a retail branch with Novastar. Um, what were we doing? Run me back to that. Let's just stay there for a second. Right, we were in Bloomington. Yep, we right. were in Bloomington at the was it the Seville Hotel that used to be there on the corner? I think. In, no, no, well, it, was it was right that, next to that in that office building. It was right in there. that office building. Yep, yeah, yeah. the one where they had that little Mexican restaurant for a while. They yeah. tore that building down right now. Yeah, I don't know if you've went by there, but uh, I think it was primarily like mailers and calling on mailers and calling trigger leads and geez. basically just dialing, cold calling people that were either responding to mailer ads or, or trigger leads that we were buying. Yeah. Um, and then when, when we kind of branched off. And hold on, hold on, buddy. <laughs> hold on. It was, it was leads. Because I remember I got my very, my very first deal I ever closed there, which you helped me with. I had you and Fred Rogers. Because Fred Fred, Rogers. Uh, Fred's yeah. still with us too. Fred's yeah. one of our corporate processors. And I'll never forget my first client. Mm -hmm. His name was Jesus, but it was Jesus. <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, I had no idea what I was doing, but that was in the wild, wild west days. So I remember I had, I'd put in fee names because you could just put whatever you wanted. And I remember I had an FDR uh, fee on my very first loan and the client was like, <laughs> what's this mean? I'm like, well, that's, it was really for Fred's, Fred's initials, FDR. Uh, and I had him helping me and you helping me, but it was, you had leads that would pop into your system yep. and you'd call them. I don't know where they came from. Cause at that point it was, uh, you know, I didn't know enough and I don't know how long, how, when did you get into the industry? Cause I started and you were the one that helped train me. 2000, 2001. Okay. So about a year prior to yep. that. Yep. Perry Hemicky and I actually, or Perry's the one that actually got me started in the business and he's still an employee with us as yes. well. So where did you start with him? Uh, when he was working Was it with, Discover at that time? No, it wasn't Discover. It was Mortgage Banking Corp mm. that he owned. Okay, so there. that was... He had that company yep. then. He too. had that company prior. I was there for a while, and then I think I had left and went over to Novastar, and that's kind of yep. where you and I He met. was in the Carlson Towers? Yep. Yep. That's right. The Carlson Towers. Yeah. And then you and I actually went back and kind of ran our... Yeah, our but little... didn't we go somewhere else after... We went... To, we were at Novastar. Um... I know because I went, I had a long period with all cities 
Yep. I think shortly after that, right? Yep. And then I also had, I was at, were you ever at Ace Funding? Yep, but I wasn't ever there. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, don't, I think there was a time in between there. I, I, I had gone over and worked for uh, LendSure. That's right. You were an account executive. Yeah. Yep. I forgot yep. about yep. that. For a little bit with one That's of the... why I was at, uh, at All Cities, which all of those jobs for us were um, lead-based, right? I mean, yep. we were just that pounding time, the phones. and Yeah, there wasn't even really such, a, such a, an, an avenue of social media or or you know, farming your network at that point in the business. It was, yeah, we didn't know about it. Well, yeah, there wasn't really a CRM system set up yet that we were using or anything that we would track our, our business with. Yeah. So it was more, uh, just calling and hell and, cell phones were just coming out yeah. five years prior yeah. to that <laughs> makes us feel a little bit old today. It was very transactional based. Yeah. Every, every deal was, you know, pump the fees and do what you can and keep the deal in place and onto the next one. And, there wasn't really as much uh, customer relation or customer transaction. No, as there no was. it was a one, one hit or quitter. You'd uh, close the deal and then done and off to yeah. find some, chase a new rabbit out of the hole, which, you know, I, I, I don't know. I have flashbacks from when we were doing this and I feel like there was even a time. Did you ever go to the co like county courthouse with me? Weren't we pulling records of some sort? I remember going to the courthouse, and maybe that was just me when I was doing the investor side. I've done that, but I don't think we did. Okay. With uh, I just with, remember that early on in my career. Yeah, with the foreclosure. Yeah, stuff. I remember you'd you go, doing that. You'd go down to yeah. the the courthouse and pull people's uh, mortgage notes or whatever, yeah. and uh, you could. We worked a couple of those uh, transactions together. Yeah. Over there. Yeah, it was, yeah, that was a that was a good time. I learned a lot during that. During then, I remember when I got in, I was like, people have asked me, like, like most people, you stumble into the mortgage industry, right? For me, it was really I was sick of traveling nonstop with the job that I had. But for for you, what, what was your story? How did you get into the? I know you said Perry introduced you to it, but yeah. walk me through it a little bit. Tell me how uh, one you heard about it, two. Um, your first place, we know who you worked with, but give me a little background on how you stumbled into this industry. So I came from, I did car sales and finance in the car biz for a little bit, um, but mostly car sales for, yeah. I don't know, close to five years. That was probably my first, you know, career as you would call it. Yep. Um, and then was traveling around, actually was down in Texas and um, ran into a dead end with the, the dealership and the job I was with down there and called Perry and... You were in yeah. Texas? Yeah. I didn't know that. What part? Arlington. Oh, okay. Yeah. How long were you there for? Just over a year and a half. Yeah. Hmm. Close to two years. Slinging cars? Yeah. <laughs> it's a huge, huge, uh, huge car capital of the world area. Really? Texas in general. Yeah. Why? You know? I don't know. Just the population, I think, and the ports and everything else that are there. And I mean, it was... It was Crazy the uh, the biz the car business there in comparison to what I what I came from. Here. Yeah, so. hmm. interesting. But anyway, then Perry uh, Perry said you should come try the mortgage business, and he kind of brought me brought me in under his wing, so to speak, and taught me how to do, I guess for lack of better terms, all the dirty work. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, from from filing. I mean, there was nothing the same as it is now. It's there was you know we had a computer obviously, and we're doing a ten oh three, but. It was all paper documents. It was all, you know, print your document pack and either mail it or drive it over to the client, get it signed. <laughs> and um, I did all, I learned basically A to Z from Perry and he kind of, I think he paid me a hundred bucks a file or something yes. back then. <laughs> Didn't to, you set a learn. record back then though? I remember like, I don't know I'm having this flashback, but you used to keep all of your, because I walked into that office yeah. um, prior, before I even got into the industry. Just because, I, I don't know, there's a lot of people that work there that are still yep. really fun, cool yep. people. So, yep. um, didn't you have a board that had all the clients? In? You had you had a record month, I think, that you still have never beat. Yeah, it, I think it was close to 30 yeah. clients, back, 30 loans in a month back then. Just something so. wild. And that's a lot different. even than more 30. than that, though. Yeah, I mean, well, that's, I, that's what I can remember is, I mean, it's different, obviously, back then. Even yeah. tracking and doing it and whatnot, but I think that was... Uh, that, that was, was the same type of lead small. business. You guys were just yeah. uh, yep, same thing. And then we'd you know we had some mix in at that point. As you, if you remember when we when mortgage banking closed, we had banks and walls of all those closed files that we were able to kind of. So it, it was all uh, it was all basically lead, and then you know follow up from the leads that we had. Yep. So, so I remember after you know what we left Novastar, we did a couple things in between. But then you and I got back together again. 
partnered with Perry. And I remember us doing like unique campaigns yep. to daycare providers. Daycare providers remember, yep. because it was yep. quite not like almost like a bank statement loan, so to speak, or there was something unique where everybody else couldn't really get them. I don't know, one, couldn't get them done, or two, you could just go online and pull the daycare registry. Well, think, obviously they're answering their phones, they work from home, yep. it's in a house. You and I just that destroyed was, the daycare market yeah. here in Minnesota. I think that was stated income verified asset days, if yeah. I remember, or something. You had to be self-employed, and we that's when we were running that small uh, telemarketing center, and. We had a great, I mean, it was a great target, so to say, for lack of better That's terms. Right. They were home all day, and they were people that couldn't quite get normal financing because of the amount of, you know, income and then write-offs that a daycare provider has and the end income that they would show on their taxes. So it was kind of a perfect niche. Uh, was, wasn't it? We, yeah. we just ran through those left and right. And yeah. I now that you say it. For a couple of years. Yeah. I think yeah. Dan Holst. Yep. Uh, yep. Who's still, a, who's still a friend of mine. I think he works at uh, Wells Fargo now. Shout out Dan Hulse. Yeah. Uh, but he ran our telemarketing uh, yep. department, which was cool because we had the whole, I mean, cubicle set up, dialers, yeah, everybody. Yeah, he created our, our system in that uh, uh, Microsoft. I forgot the name of it. So do I, but Not I do. Excel or it's like one of those old. Uh... It was an older program, but he <laughs> had it dialed in yeah. back then. It was yeah. cool. Then, uh, so and it worked. It was half paper, half system based. Remember, each each uh, each telemarketer would take their their apps and everything on paper and turn them in, and then Dan would hand the papers out. That's for right. Leads. I remember it. Yeah, you know, so. always be setting appointments. That was those were fun days. I I don't I don't miss consumer direct though. I mean, obviously, I love to work with con, with customers. Yeah, but when you're value proposition is you're the only person that called them at that point or you're yeah. trying to push them and sell them it's a lot different than you know i don't know the relationship based business but there's, what, there's so much more uh customer information out there nowadays too i feel it's well, not it wouldn't be the same if we were taking that approach i think today just because of the internet uh growth and the amount of information and rates and costs and everything that's available to people without taking those phone calls. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's still a lot of people that are doing that. I mean, I've got, uh, and I say do that as in doing client direct, right? Doing yeah. triggers, doing mailers, doing, to me, that's, uh, I don't know. Yeah, triggers. It's a job and not a career, yeah. right? I think, uh, and that leads me to kind of our like next chapter together. Um, I moved from, so the market collapsed 2008, right? right? Um, I think everybody knows what I did, but I, I want to hear like when the market collapsed in 2008 for you, we were working together. Actually, I know we were because we lost our FHA ability yep. to fund and we got screwed out of a bunch of money that we even paid money to set up with this lender. Yep. Um, what did you do after? I don't, I don't remember. I'm trying to think where I filled in the, there was a, uh, there was a couple of years or a year there. I mean, I've always had my, I've always held my license. Yeah. I've never, you know, completely strayed from the business, but I think there was some time there where I even went to work like construction or yeah, side, yeah, yeah. side business with yep. my father at that time. He was still... Boy, that was a rough time. Yeah. Yeah. That I did was the same thing. I did roofing. All, remember all the lenders were shutting down? We had oh, the lender, the, the, implode, the implode list. list. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and every day we could come into the office and just see two, three, five of our blenders just shut down, dropping off our list, and, and you were just kind of crossing your fingers that it wasn't the one that had any oh, deals that you had funding it. with it. Yeah. Oh, man. You ain't kidding. The, those were not fun days. But but I do remember. I think you went to go work with your dad. You are yep. putting in windows. Yep. Window and That's patio right. door installation. So. I kind of like that. I mean, even for me, I look back when times got tough. You know, I remember... I went to like this, I moved back to Ohio, right? Yep, yep. Um, had my arms broken. I was kind of in a tough spot. Uh, market collapsed. I was, uh, I, I went back home to Ohio for roughly two years, got married, had a baby. And then I called, I called you and you and I always stayed close friends. I mean, yep. we've been, it's kind of cool to think about it. You and I have been friends now for at least 21 20, years. Yeah, long which time. Which is a long yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Weren't you working at the money store? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, did you do a short stint? I came there out with there me? for a while out there. Now we were, I was at the money store, and then I think I actually, when I came back, yeah, I was trying to work the money store from yeah, it's from home. Minnesota, yep, yeah, from my home, like from my basement. And those were 24 7 
inbound oh, yeah. mailer lead calls. And just the same. People from coast to coast oh. <laughs> calling and, and just pounding you. On they had the Phil <laughs> Rizzuto uh, money store commercials yeah. on TV. They did a lot of yeah. TV advertising. And it seemed like half the information that it was on the, the mailers would change week to week. Oh, yeah. Week, and we never really knew exactly what was on there. And it, you just never really knew what you were going to get with the person on the other line. <laughs> you got a, you got a ball pitched at you, whether yeah. you hit it or not was yeah. to be determined. But yeah. uh, so <clears throat> I remember calling like, because we stayed in touch. Obviously, he came out to visit me in Ohio, and then I remember um, our next spot because I I left December of 2010, right? And is that right? Was it December? Maybe it was September. I don't. know. It was 2010 though, because I remember my daughter was born. Yeah. Um, I had to find a place to live and I wasn't even here, but I was moving back. And I yep. remember you toured, I had that place in St. Louis Park. Yep. Remember? Yep. And you went and you walked were... it with me, walked it for me. I don't even think FaceTime exists. Maybe it did. Maybe we had FaceTime or some 2000. The place on the corner? Yeah, 30, yeah. In, yep. uh, 32nd and Florida, Florida Avenue in uh, yep. St. Louis Park. Good house. It's kind of cool how like the stories always come full circle because even the lady that I rented that house from is an agent that I work with to this. To, to this wow. day, joy. Oh. Um, but I remember you did the walkthrough for me and then we started at a company, uh, wasn't LensMart, but what was it? You Lens, remember? Lens was, uh, it was right in Minnetonka Bob, off yeah, Whitewater. Bob, Bob Sarna's, I forgot the yeah, name. Yeah, there was a couple of guys Lens there. LensMart, I think you're right, LensMart. I think it was. That's where Carl Jones and all Yeah, and Tyler and, Jensen yep, yep, and yep. that was yep. the same thing. It was a fun, it yep. was fun. They ran a good business. They were, Obviously, they had an in-house underwriter, I remember. Yep. Um, I think that's where we first met uh, uh, Joe Walker and... Yes. And Chris and... and yes. Yeah. Yep. yeah and I think so. Then uh, I remember from there, we were like, you and I were just so burnt out from right back doing the same thing and calling leads and you and I always kicked ass. I mean, yeah. it Worked wasn't hard. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't like you were always the first one there in the morning. I remember you were like a real early guy, like yeah. stupid early. I'm like, what is this guy <laughs> doing here? And I'd normally stay a little bit later or I don't know. Back then I didn't have the work ethic that I do now. That's for sure. Um, but then I remember you and I having this conversation. It was probably when we were out in your car going for a spin just to get some air. Um, but we were like, man, this is like, this is not what I want to do the rest of my life is yeah. calling, chasing cold it. calling clients or just chasing leads. It was great money and it was a hell of a lot better than swinging a hammer. Uh, but at the same time, you and I were like, let's, let's try like the relationship side of this business because yep. it was always there. We just didn't know about it. Right. Yep. I mean, it's been there from banks. It's been there from places, you know, I don't know, like larger retail lenders that focused on realtor relationships. And I think we might have known, we knew it was there. We just didn't realize we were missing it. Well, you know? I think a lot of it is you don't think you can do it, right? Yeah. At least for a lot of people, it's like, well, I don't have 15 agents that I'm best buddies with or, you know, um, we just didn't quite understand it. And I, at that point, we wanted to go to a company to where we could learn from other people that were doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's when we ended up at uh, Waterstone. Waterstone. Yeah. And Maple Grove, uh, which was a man, just a great learning experience for me because I, one, I was still trying to bring the lead side of the business that we did, but into the purchase side. Right. Yeah. Uh, cause everything we did was refinances before and we were buying, we there were buying our own purchase. leads. Hello is when we finally went there. That's where we kind of first. It's where we saw that, yeah. right? Yeah. Jeff Sherber, Jeff Blair Sherber, Matthewson, yeah. Troy yeah. And Lenar. Yeah. Um, I mean, there was a lot of really good loan officers at, uh, at that company and all relationship based. So it gave me the opportunity to see, like I remember Jeff Sherber's outfit back then. It was like, that dude was killing it. <laughs> yeah. you know? Same thing, they had moving trucks. Systems. Though. They had systems, yeah. yeah. LOAs, yeah. processors. Um, he did, a, he did a great job. I learned, I learned a lot from him uh, during that time. But then, you know, we were there about a year, maybe even a little lot. Maybe I wasn't a super long time. About a year. I yeah, think. we were there yeah. about a year. And I remember you and I were still buying leads and we were chasing, at least for me, I was buying leads in areas that qualified for USDA loans. And we would then take the lead and try to build a relationship with right. it. So yep. uh, to this day, 
the people that I met back in 2010 from doing that are still agents that I work with, which is which is really cool. So yeah. for those that's that are, we did our first event together. Uh, oh yeah, hot that's, dogs and handshakes. Yes. <laughs> hey, that was fun though. <laughs> yeah, we did was. a bunch of cool shit like that though, because yeah. we even did uh, for a while there. That's when we said, well, screw it, let's start throwing uh, housewarming parties. Yep. And after the at the closing. Yeah. 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 So we would uh, show up to somebody's house that bought a home and. We'd bring beer yep. and hamburgers and yep. hot dogs. Yep, that was fun. It was a blast. I we did once five again, or so of those, I can recall. Yeah, yeah. everyone that I did, there that we did together, those are still clients of mine, almost to the point where I talk to them at least once a quarter. Yeah, that's cool. It was. Yeah. I mean, I really think uh, that's something that we should look at trying to get back into because it, uh, you do create those relationships with people, but then they become... They almost become salesmen or saleswomen for you because you get a chance to know them. They get a chance to know you. Yeah, everybody likes that. And I freaking like party. them. It was yeah. a blast. It's like the perfect time to show off your brand new home. And yes. Yeah. My favorite so. one I think that we did was like an Elk River with uh, the Cunninghams. Yeah. Um, or Daisies, I think. was a good Yeah. One they, those yeah. are another good ones. Yeah. Yes. Both. Yeah. It actually was. You're right. It yeah. was them, but that's how we met the Cunningham. Yeah. I met the Cunningham. But it was, it was a blast. You're basically... And I was on the grill, and you were serving <laughs> beer, I think. Yeah. It was fun. In the garage, we had it set yes. up. And yeah. That's yeah. wild. I almost uh, almost forgot you about it. You get a chance to meet everybody, though. You're shaking everybody's hand. You did. And it's a no-brainer. Yeah. As long as you're not a weirdo showing up at somebody's house and creeping them out or doing something. but Yeah, we, no business or anything. Just yeah, having fun. We and, yeah. had a good time. They enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, and that's something we should think about doing again, because it really was... Uh, I think the housewarming idea is something that, one... Yeah, it probably costs us three, eight, four hundred bucks. I mean, yeah, that's, that's at the end of the day, being able to do that and uh, you know create relationships with people is really what now yeah. being on the you know so referral base yeah. side is what it is. How do you how do you build your network, right? right? And so you and I started that twelve years ago now, right? Um, mm. And then I remember the deal that made us decide like. This is ridiculous. Like, one, we knew we were getting beaten rates because Chris Hacker and Chantel Hacker had, uh, they were with, a, they had their own branch of North American Finance. Yep. Well, but basically, yep. Chantel used to run that company for them. So yep. she still kind of ran the company with her own branch, um, <laughs> which she had to because those guys, I don't know how it worked for them. But I remember she, they even gave her her own account. I mean, back then it was a little wild, but it was kind of cool. But what we kept doing, we'd have deals at one. We'd get opinionated on the writing on that they couldn't close. Yep. Um, and we would be like, you were like, no, I know this can get that's, done. Yeah. That's and that's it. where just the one box with them. And yeah. I mean, that's where I learned a lot of my fight was from you. Like uh, when I say that, like fighting to where when you know you can help someone and not not allowing no to be acceptable. Yeah. And you were like, I'm calling uh, call my buddy Chris and we'll see what he can do. And it was a four unit property, still friends with this client, that client to this day. And I remember he took the loan, closed it in like 15 days back then, which was smoking. Yep. Uh, helped the client buy a, a, a good cash flowing four unit property that was a um, primary residence. And um, from yep. there it was like, and then he showed us the, remember he showed us the paycheck too, or like, <laughs> What yeah. the hell is this? Yeah. Like, how did you make... Where did my lend fit in for us? Was that right? Uh, that's what I I forgot. I was thinking about that earlier. Could... I think my lend was in between... Um, it wasn't it was. even really a thing for No, nah, it really wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> but I was trying to think where that idea and opportunity of ours... We got, we got called and sold and yeah. it, it was something We were going to go wear... off and run our own P&L and yep. branch at that time and it just... It was the same model though at that point. Like it was another yeah. lead chasing yep. uh, model, and they didn't. That didn't work for and us. It wasn't transparent. We found at all. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm still friends with those guys, and I still think they're in existence. To be honest with you, I'm pretty I'm sure. Still getting uh, mailers from them. I think. Are you? Yeah, yeah I wouldn't doubt it. So, um, I forgot about Milan. That was an exciting journey, quick journey, but. So I remember you sent the deal to Chris. Chris closed it. He showed us the commission check. We're like, okay, wait a minute. We just lost $15,000 that at that point for us was like, because we're still coming out yeah. of, uh, you know, 2008. And I was like, okay, this is, 
what are we doing? Yeah. Like what, what's going on here? Why can't we just take that model, go out, build relationships and broker, broker loans. Like yeah. it made it, uh, it made it to where like, I hate to say we're kind of the OGs in this market, but yeah. I really think we were like, think of any other successful mortgage brokerage or brokers that entered into the purchase side of business, you know, after the market collapse, there wasn't really anybody doing that. Everybody was looking for, you know, at least like a correspondent relationship or yep. you had to have some skin in the game as the lender or you weren't going to get response time. You were going to have no control of your file. You weren't going to be able to fight with underwriting decisions. Yes. Well, a lot um, of it was the LO comp. comp oh, yeah. I yeah, mean, that, that was why we... Part of the big reason where it was like, well, wait a minute, because everything before was like, well, you know, we'll charge one in the front as one point origination yep. and you get two mm -hmm. points in the, yep. on the yield in the back. And, and your comp was just a percentage of the total. Yeah. 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 Yep. You worked somewhere good. You were at a 70% split or an 80% split. Um, that was, that was, uh, well, anyways. And then, and then they started uh, setting different comp for every loan officer at each company. Yes. Remember that? So yes. it's like every guy or gal out there was selling a different rate based mm -hmm. on the comp plan they set with they, what they wanted with the to bank, make. Right. So. I mean the ones that had uh, good relationships and yeah. the people weren't choppers. Yep. They were just They're baby sealing them. them. Done. Yeah. Which uh you know to me I guess it's one of those things I'm kind of glad that it's not I guess it's yeah. not it's still the same way. It is just I invisible. Mean, it, it's yeah. It 100% is the same way on the retail side, because if you look at most branches, how they run their P&L, you can cite your comp, whatever you want. Yep. You know, I want to make 300 basis points, so my comp, my margins need to be 500 basis points. Yep. That's common. Um, you obviously have been doing some recruiting here lately too, so you, you get to hear about it, uh, hear about it often. So yeah. went to uh, North American Financial with Chris and Chantel. What, the, what do you remember next? What were the next things we did? Uh, I don't remember exactly how long and what we were doing to what extent at North American, but I do remember it was a short time after that we kind of decided, or Chris and Chet, you guys mainly um, decided, hey, let's start our own, yep. get everything together, start our own shop, and that's kind of where Edge started. Yes. Um, I, I can't remember the, the first location that we went. Oh, you can't? I mean, I know that I remember where we worked all the time. It's funny to say it, but we were we were out of each other's, we were kind of out of my basement. We were out of your basement. And Chris and that Chantel house in were, Plymouth yep, that uh, yep. Joe Cavanaugh. Yep. Um, I think that was, no, it wasn't Joe. It was that guy in Hawaii, the options trader. Oh yeah, the old guy. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. but it was right by where he- That's where I met Cavanaugh. Yes. Yeah, across the street. Yeah. Yep. His and then sister, Chris and Chantel were in, uh, in uh, their basement. And that's, yes. like, and then we, we got the office, was it right over in? Across from Lifetime. Yep, yep, yep. that's right, right, right there. Right in Plymouth Lifetime, which was a cool office. I don't even remember who was with us at that point completely. Fred, and it was a couple loan office. It was only a two-room yeah. two office, and then like a reception oh, room and a conference room. Than that. We had like six offices, and then that little cubicle area where there was two or three cubicles. Right oh, there. yeah, yeah, those are built in. Yeah, 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 yeah I guess. But that was, uh, that, was, that was the start of, uh, that was the start of Edge, right? Yeah. I mean, that's when you and I were like, okay, let's, uh, let's try to let's do this. Let's try to see what we can do to own. get, yeah. uh, build realtor relationships, making phone calls. Having um, meetings with financial planners. I mean, everything we could think of at that point. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, that was fun. I mean, we went from there to where we moved out of that office. We moved down the road just a little bit to a bigger office. Yep. Um, and at that point, uh, things were things were going things were going good. Um, there was a little bit of a lull there for a short period of time where you know our lease was up. We kind of were like, okay, well, what's next? You and I both were like, okay, well, let's. We end up splitting ways for for a little bit, and you actually left for a little bit, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. What'd you go do? Uh, a little bit of everything. I mean, mostly real estate stuff. With That's right. You got your real estate license. Yeah, and... got my real estate license. Was kind of just working primarily with my son-in-law and his buying and selling and the things that he's doing. Yeah. And, um, just some fun stuff. You know, we bought an RV and yes. rented that out and some cool stuff, but things that don't really 
pay the bills the way they need to. <laughs> so, well, sometimes, you know, you know, not everything, don't get me wrong. I like paying the bills, but at the same time, yeah. you got to find joy, joy in life, right? And I think, uh, one, you and Amy find joy in your lives because yeah. uh, your, your wife, she's an amazing person as well. Your daughter-in-law, is that yep. correct? Uh, um, one of them started working, well, I don't say working with us, but uh, she's a processor yeah. now here. Yeah. Just came over recently. She's great. She's a... Uh, She's experienced in the business, came from another local mortgage company that uh, just kind of changing and not growing with the, the market and the yep. times, I guess you could say. So we found her an opportunity at one of our third party companies because she wants to be able to charge her fee and the loan officers that she work with, she works with can do that as well. So beautiful. So far, so good. I mean, she loves the difference between working retail and working broker. It gives her more time to grow with the, the actual loan officer and the relationship there versus just working on all the dates, yep. you know, which is nice. Yep. So, um, yeah. I always like to ask a question, couple questions about going like into the future a little, right? Like one, what do you see, you know, the, the future of the mortgage industry in general? And when I say that, we're not talking next tomorrow or a, a week from now. Let's go. You and I have been obviously in this 21 years, mm -hmm. 21 years from today. What, what do you see the mortgage industry looking like, in your opinion? Hmm. Well, I definitely think there's going to be less, uh, less creativity in the mar from the marketing side. I guess when I say creativity, I mean with AI and the yeah. things that are coming out now and the yep. ability for people to pump ads and pump things out there and basically even pump a video like this out there. Yeah. Um, I think that most people are going to eventually be able to utilize a platform, an advertising platform, where they can look and appear as though they're a person, a, a million dollar budget or a yeah. person or whatever their niche is and, you know, whatever, whatever track they want to follow. I think it's always going to stay relationship based because when it comes to a mortgage and that, that financial piece of most people's life being yeah. the most, you know, the, the highest decision, um, I don't think people are ever just going to want to fully trust that to you know a system and yeah. hope that it's right i think there's always that that human to human kind of touch that people want um, especially if you put it there if you build it from from the ground up and you let them know that you're trusted and you've got their back and you're looking out for everything that they're doing um, in my opinion that's not going to change hopefully it doesn't change but yeah. i think a lot of aspects of it will i think the real estate side of it will um, as more, same thing though, I think people are going to want a realtor to sell them a house, not a robot. Yeah. Um, but I think there's so much more information out there for buyers and consumers now on the internet, you know, everything you, with the virtual showings and I mean, everything out there, I think the real estate side of it is going to change where hopefully we can stop depending as much as we do for business to just come through the real estate channel and start being kind of some of the front running educators, I guess, in my opinion, on the mortgage side, because yeah. I think you're the one that taught me this, uh, you know, when people buy a house, they're also buying the money yep. that goes with the house. Yep. And it's just as important to shop for that. You know, you got people that go back and forth on a purchase agreement for a week because of a $5,000 difference in a, in a, you know, appliance or anything like that, but they won't take an extra, you know, they're going to refer them to somebody that's yeah, $13,000. Exactly. And that's going to, that expensive. exactly. And that's going to cost money every month for every year. I mean, it's, it's, it's important to educate people in that aspect. And I think that piece of it is going to, it's going to remain human to human yeah. you know, yep. contact. So. Yeah. My, uh, my opinion with that is really, you know, right now the technology is such as to where like, you can do everything digital, like meaning I can auto verify employment. Mm -hmm. I can auto verify your assets, um, yep. your credit score. I think when you look at agency in general with Fannie, Freddie, if you're a W2 employee, you verified your money. I can see us really honestly being cut out in yeah. 20 years from that type the of standard, business. Yeah. Now, let's say that you um, were self-employed and just went w 2 this year and it's not on your taxes. Those are gonna be deals that are always gonna take a manual look where somebody's gonna do it. My guess would be 20 years from now, cause you gotta think there's been a lot that's changed in 20 years. Now, when you look at the advancement of technology, like you mentioned, there's so much happening so fast right now that I think they will find a way to either one, like if you created a company that could 
you know, one, you don't have to pay the larger premiums right. to have staff, have yeah, an office, yeah. have. Now, we run super lean, which is why we're cheaper, better, and faster. Yeah. But <laughs> with that being said, you know, what if uh, our total gross revenues were 50 basis points, but all it was was an automated platform where you go yeah. in, if you qualify, you register your employment, your income, assets, and done. you're done. Yeah, and, and then the mainstream, basically. And is it's what that there is. really already. Well, the more and more they change the tax codes and everything, too, the less, you know, differences are going to be out there on yeah. people's taxes. Well, that's so. the thing, right? I'm not even saying like the people that have those differences, we will always, I think, have right. a spot for us. Yep. When it comes to investing and in people that are looking at venture capitalists or um, those that say, hey, like I want to hedge funds, for example, does it make sense to do bank statement loans? Does it make sense? To, like, I think there will always be a place for us. I just don't think right now we have 100% of the pie yeah, um, not even close. and I think that's gonna uh, that's gonna t the technology is gonna take us a little bit away from that. But uh, who knows? Hell, 20, 20, 20 years from now, you and I will be uh, sitting on a beach, hopefully <laughs> somewhere, having wheelchair wars, or uh, uh, hopefully not, not at sixty sixty three. I don't, I don't be in a wheelchair then, but uh, hopefully good. not. Right. So. <clears throat> I asked you about where you think this industry will be in 21 years. Let me ask you about you, right? I've known you a long time. You're one of the, not one of, you are one of the smartest guys when it comes to mortgages that I've known on how to structure deals, how to, you know, just overall, you've been a big impact in my life on many things, work ethic, um, you know, really just being creative and trying to do your own research on things and also just feeling confident about the decision that I'm making because I've watched you like, no, here's what this says. I know this will work. Yeah. Um, Challenging yeah. things. Yeah. yeah, there you yeah. go. Five years from now for yourself, right? I think you've, you know, you've had, you've had some little ups and downs with uh, things. And like you said, just sometimes you want to go live life and take a break from all the stress. Um, you've been back into the mode now where you're committed to growing, uh, growing your business from where it's at today. Yep. Where do you see yourself in five years? Uh, I would like to focus continually on growth, obviously, with both my realtor base and customer base, um, and then also on the recruiting side. I really enjoy working with guys and showing them the difference between retail or the you know the one box model that they're coming from yep. over to Edge and what we can offer with so many choices and so many more ways to help the realtor help the borrower help pretty much everybody in the transaction so getting now into the recruiting side um, I'm starting to really kind of see where I'm never gonna take it away from just originating yeah in five years I can I can hope that my balance is is more that I'm focusing more time on the recruiting and Definitely. less time on just building my network yep. um, at the same time I realize fully that you can't you know you can't just depend on other people, in my opinion, to, to make your make your paycheck. So 100%. I'm never going to quit, you know, marketing my base, marketing yeah. my closed clients, marketing my, you know, transactional uh, referral partners, where if, even if it's not my my realtor, it's the other realtor on the transaction. That stuff always has to go on. So yeah. in five years, I'm hoping that with this market right now, with the rates high and so many, you know, people on the sideline and kind of taking themselves out of the market, I think that's going to change just with time because I don't think the rates are ever going to go back to 3%. Yeah. So I think people are just going to kind of start realizing, okay, let's, let's do this um, and take it for what it is. And I hope things just continue to grow. I mean, five years from now, if, if I continue to work and put in the time and effort, um, I'm, I'm thinking that my business should be, you know, four X where it is now at minimum. Yeah, good. So good. I'd like yeah. to hear that. I don't yeah. think there's any question. I think, uh, as I mentioned before, and I don't, I don't doll out compliments to say you've been one of a the most influential people in my career, uh, but you're also one of the smartest like when it comes to this industry. So I, I really, I really hope that happens for you uh, in the next couple of years. So, you know, we appreciate you tuning in. It's been another great around the edge episode. We'll be back here next week, and we got a pretty cool guest next week too, don't we? Who we got, Jake? Great question. Ah, <laughs> great question. I don't know. Is it Josh? Is it... Uh, Maybe Kelly. Kelly? Ooh, I don't know. We've got... That'd be we've nice. Run now. I think we have roughly over 800 team members. 
But it's cool. Jake has been with us since day one. Um, not Jake Latrell. I wish he would have been with us since day one, but he still would have been in middle school. I, I think, think that was so. actually the first uh, loan officer employed for Edge. Yes. Like after you guys got the you license were. and everything. One hundred percent, you were. Yeah. yeah. Chris yeah. and Chantel <laughs> said that to me. Uh, I don't know, a couple of months ago. And so like, that's you know, cool. Yeah. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. And I'm like, oh, that's right. I had to close out the deals from the last place before yep. we uh, before we made the changeover. Yep. But it's been, I'll tell you, it's been a good partnership. You know, yeah. it's been a good partnership with you. It's been an amazing partnership with Chris and Chantel. Um, everything has one has just been really transparent. Yeah. Which to it's, me is it's been, uh, great. it's been good to have to not only have the same company, be to be with the same employer. Yep. for as long as what we have to know like you and i have we know this industry there is not a better place to no, be no no and to uh, see the the transparency hold through the growth that edge has experienced yes you know a lot of times that's where in my experience anyway that's where the transparency starts to get fuzzy oh, with yeah. companies is oh. when you it's when so you have easy. success and you have growth and you have more places to you know in my opinion it's like okay this edge and edge's model has endured that and stayed the same stayed exactly the same has, and yeah. tried and true to kind of what they yep. set out with and i mean it's it's second to none in my opinion out there it really is it's kind of funny it was uh, another um i'll just say top company uh was saying why they don't ever record or share their recruiting meetings because they make so many changes all the time <laughs> that they don't want to. So like you're advertising one yeah. comp plan, next month it might change. Oops. Next yeah, month we don't do that change. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, appreciate you, brother. Look forward to uh, crushing 2023 and our next, uh, our next, we got roughly, because you, you got a couple of years on me. We got 20 plus years together yeah. still oh, to yeah. enjoy what we're doing and realize really, you know, what comes of the hard work that we put in. Yep. Right? Yep. Take some time to enjoy it. So yep. thank you again, everyone. Hope you all have an amazing time. We'll see you next week.